Now I got to do something last night that I hope a lot of you new tires realize is one of the most fun things we can do at the bench, and that's just sit around and experiment. But obviously, we're going to want to try out some of the patterns that we come up with. Then I realized I've got a pond about 20 minutes from my house. Now I'm talking about Cedarville State Forest here in Southern Maryland. Now it's mostly hiking and biking trails, but they do have one small little pond there. Now, I've gone out plenty of times with the family. We've been hiking there, taking the mountain bikes out, but I've never fished this pond. So this morning, I decided I want to try out some of these patterns that I came up with. So I grabbed my float tube and my five-weight rod and head on out there. And I did have a few patterns that I wanted to try out, and I'll admit one of them was a complete bust. It was a streamer with a cone head on it, pretty heavily weighted with a rabbit zonker strip. Thing was just way too heavy to be casting with a five-weight. But one pattern I came up with, it actually worked okay today. Just another crazy little hopper pattern. This one was a pink body, had a little bit of flash and a squirrel tail for a wing. It's got some white legs, and then it's got a little bit of dry fly hackle up front. Now, I was only on the pond for about an hour or so, and I did get three decent sunfish with it, and then missed maybe half a dozen others, so the thing at least got their attention. Now I'll put some footage at the end of this video of me flailing around out there in the float tube. And please don't laugh too hard because I really had no idea what I'm doing. I got this thing last summer and I've only taken it out twice. So I, I'm really not very good at fishing from it. Oh, one other thing. I didn't really plan to make this a name the fly contest, but since this is a fly that I just came up with and I plan to tie a few more and try it out the rest of the summer, I'd love to hear what y'all think we should call this. So this is not an official contest. I probably won't put it up for a vote. I'll just, you know, pick a name that I think sounds pretty cool. And okay, well, let's make it interesting. Who, Whatever name I do pick, I'll send you a hat just for fun. So that's it. Let's tie this unknown, unnamed, TBD, pink hopper looking thing. So there it is in the vise. My unknown, unnamed, experimental, pink hopper. Kind of a crazy looking pattern here. And I tied this on a size eight. That's what I was fishing today. And that's what I'm tying it on right now. Let's go ahead and pinch that barb. This is a 3X long curved shank hook. It's the J-Stalker J2430, which is one of my go-to hooks for hoppers and even streamers, and in smaller sizes, nymphs. Now, since I'm using pink and white legs, I'm gonna use white thread. I'm just catching it in up front, and I'm gonna leave it up front, then I'm gonna put some pink ice dub on it. Now I'm not putting too much on here and I don't even know if this step is, is necessary. I don't know how visible it is and how big of a difference it might even make. Might not make much of a difference at all and you know feel free to skip this step if you want. But I'm dubbing it in up front and just have a noodle enough to get me to the back a little bit past where I'm going to tie in the um, back segment of the, the body. So I'm a little bit past right there, take my thread up just a, a little bit. And I'm gonna use my River Run, I think River Creations uh, die for cutting out these little pieces right here. This is certainly not necessary really, but it does help you keep these consistent. So this is a three millimeter foam. And let's see, I'm gonna leave the eye right there because we've uh, got a little bit going on up front. So let's catch this in. We can catch this one in pretty tight. And I'm gonna put a wrap up under it, over it, under it, and over it. Watch the point of your hook. And several more just to keep it from spinning. And that's one of the things that that ice dub does. It does help keep it from spinning. Now you see this, this die cut piece of foam right there? It's got that next indentation, which kind of tells you that's where you should put your next segment, but I didn't want the middle segment being that big, so I'm gonna cut one right in the middle of it right there. So now I've got a smaller middle segment, and now I'll go up again and then do this one right there. And this one, I'm not pulling really tight just yet. I'm gonna put several wraps, pull some thread out, several more wraps, and I'm not pulling it tight yet because we got a lot going on at that little junction right there. We're gonna tie in the legs and then a couple of wings and a pair of posts. So that's really where the bulk of the fly is gonna be tied. And for the legs, white, white, you know, 
rubber, small rubber right here, and I'm gonna just catch them in right on the bottom. If you want to tie knots in the, the back legs, yeah, sure, go for it. I didn't, and I think it worked just fine without doing that, so I'm just gonna lay them in right here on the bottom. Pull my thread out so I don't have to put, put them on too tight. So that's kind of the legs I want. I, I sort of like this little Madam X style. And I'm gonna pull some thread out and put several wraps right here. These aren't tight, just kind of building up a little area right here. And now, next thing I'm gonna catch in is some crystal flash. Just three strands of the small stuff. And then I'm gonna fold it over so I'll end up with six strands going back, okay? And don't worry if they flare up on you, they might. We'll use the next two components of this wing to help lay them down. Okay, I think that's fine right there. Let's cut them to size a little bit past the body. Now for the main part of the wing, just a kind of small to medium sized tuft of hair from a squirrel tail. And I want it to be about the length of the body. And again, I'm not gonna put this on too tight because I don't want it to flare up in the back. So I'm taking some loose wraps, going back, and now I can, I can put a tighter wrap or so at the front of this little area. And now with any luck, you know, that back wing isn't flaring up too much. So let's go ahead and trim this. And what I did here, I put a small drop of super glue. Now, I don't know how important this is, but I think it will really add to the durability of the fly. So a little small drop of super glue right there and just kind of let it wick into that squirrel hair and then the thread wraps. And that super glue will also help us hold in the next component, which is just a model turkey feather, a slip right here. I'm gonna lay it in right on the top. And if that squirrel is flaring up too much on you, this will help push it down. So just let's just kind of lay that right there, the length of that squirrel, and then put a, another loose wrap or two right there. And now we can go with some tighter wraps up forward. So really we've had that drop of super glue there and then the, the squirrel hair is caught in with it and so is this turkey feather. So it should be a pretty durable fly with that little extra step right there. Now one thing to note, this is where I'm tying in uh, an indicator. This thing, even though this is three millimeter foam, it doesn't float that high. And you know, I learned that today. So it definitely needs an indicator. And the one I was fishing with today, I used a fluorescent orange, which I don't think that was, you know, that vital at being bright orange. I think white is fine. So the rest of them I'm gonna tie, I'm going with a little white indicator up here. And now we can go ahead and trim this to size. Maybe, you know what, let's, let's put a wrap just around this indicator material like we were doing a parachute post on it just to kind of hold them together okay that looks good right there now you don't have to have this very long even that much right there you'd be surprised that will certainly help you see this fly at 30 40 50 feet out there now the next thing I'm doing these front legs are too long we'll trim them in a minute but let's go ahead and take our thread up here and we're going to catch in the front part of this head and make a little bit of room for getting even crazier with just a little bit of hackle up here, a little bit of dry fly grizzly hackle. Now, I really don't know what all, if this really helps the fly, but I think it does. Because fishing hoppers like this, oftentimes you will just cast them out there and let them sit, you know, without moving them. Maybe you twitch them a little bit, but sometimes they'll be sitting for three or four seconds before a fish takes it. And I think something like this that's dangling down the water and even in a still water with a, a fly that's not moving, this kind of stuff gives it just a little bit of life. So three or four wraps of this grizzly hackle right here. And that leg keeps getting in my way. I should have pushed it back or just trimmed it. But either way, let's go ahead and Catch this off, two or three wraps right here. Snip this excess and then clean up our head. 
All right, we've got some room for a whip finish right here, and then we're gonna definitely have a little bit of cleanup. My front legs are too long. Let's go ahead and trim these to size right here. They're just kind of nubs, you know, maybe half the size of your back legs right there. And actually these back legs are probably a little bit too long too, but they're not too bad. So I'm gonna just shorten them a wee bit right there. And I got a couple of rogue hairs right here, but you know what, who cares? I can still get my tip it through that. This is a fishable fly. So maybe another drop of head cement or resin right there on those final thread wraps. But that's it, pretty crazy looking pattern, but you know, so far it's worked for me. So um, I'm gonna tie a few more and keep trying it. So that's it everybody, I appreciate you watching. Y'all take care, we'll see you next time. See one car here, they could be hiking, they could be fishing, we'll see you in a second. All right, I'm in an okay position right now, but I pretty much suck at maneuvering this belly boat. If you wanna go 10 feet forward, you gotta turn around backwards and kick your legs and go 10 feet and then turn around again. It's kind of a pain. Maybe there's a better way to do it. If there is, I haven't found it. That one landed right next to that little stump coming out of there. I'm talking three inches from it. Hey, there's something. Look at that. All right, this little guy came up for it. Come on, buddy, what are you? It's not real big, but uh, is he a sunfish? Or oh, we got a little bass on here. Take me through some weeds. And it is a little sunfish. Wet the hand, treat this guy like a trout. It's a decent little fish right there. And oh man, I let him swallow this thing. I might need the hemostats to get this out. There we go. That's a decent little fish right there. Come on, buddy. I've got to get used to this belly boat. All right, that was a decent area. Oh, look at that. Look at that. That's a nice fish. What is he? He came out of the water for it. It could still be a sunfish, but I saw a little flash of orange on it. So if it's a sunfish, it's, it's a nice size one. And it is. All right, let's see. Can you see that? I would like to get the hook out of his mouth without having to handle him. Take a look at that right there. That's yeah, a decent sized fish. All right, get out of there, buddy.